Uh, no, sciatica and back pain are not the, the same thing. Um, they both pains, but uh, the back pain, of course, starts in the back, as it says, and it is a very common symptom. We all experiencing that, but it's not always associated with sciatica. Sciatica is the pain that starts from the back usually and goes all the way down to the foot uh, or parts of the leg. It uh, involves um, the nerve that comes from the spine, the sciatic nerve, and along its route, anywhere in the leg, uh, you can get uh, the sciatic pain or the sciatica. They are commonly uh, mixed together because they are often happen together. Um, back pain is the after effect of the degeneration of the spine, usually the discs, but also the joints of the spine, and they usually start before sciatica. Uh, sciatica usually follows back pain and it can be an exacerbation of the symptoms or something that uh, is indicating a more nerve problem rather than just a localized back problem. Rarely you can have a sciatica that has no back pain associated with it, but it is usually together. Um, it involves uh, the nerve itself and it often indicates some irritation in the in the way that in the nerve leaves the spine. It could be a small disc, it could be a narrowing, it could be uh, other things as well. So um, it is important to, to recognize it and it's important to discuss the symptoms properly and manage them appropriately. As always, uh, you don't immediately start uh, going to the doctor about these uh, issues, which are so common. Almost 80% of us will get back pain in sciatica. Um, normal um, uh, practices are, are there for, for us to, to use. Uh, of course, over-the-counter medication, it is important. Uh, thinking about what causes the problem may be helpful as well, because it is often uh, the way that we work, the way we um, handle ourselves, something that we have done, modifying these and making sure that uh, we don't overexert ourselves, for example, sometimes in the gym or sometimes in doing activities that we normally do, or when we sit in, uh, in front of the computer for hours, and that is important as well because it will put strain in our backs. And when I'm talking about back, I'm talking about neck as well, which is also part of the spine, and they can have similar problems. Uh, so all, both neck and lower back have the, uh, the same strain, which is our normal lifestyle. So changing our lifestyle or modifying it will, will help. Uh, obviously, looking at the symptoms, see how severe they are, if they are unusual, if they are not settling. The majority of patients will settle very quickly, usually uh, within a couple of days. But uh, if that doesn't happen and becomes more severe, if our back pain is, is becoming sciatic pain down the leg, then that's when we start thinking about uh, seeking more help and advice. And we can, of course, use uh, more readily available uh, health professionals like osteopaths, physiotherapists, chiropractors who understand the condition very well, or of course uh, reach out directly to, um, to a doctor if we think that uh, this is the way forward. Um, often there is, uh, if a, a physiotherapist or a chiropractor is uh, of a good reputation and good quality, he, will, he or she will uh, very quickly, if he recognizes the symptoms, ask or refer to a specialist for that. Um, but it is important to uh, not immediately and straight away uh, reach out for medics or, or drugs, because that is not the way to manage this kind of common conditions. It is the escalation and deterioration that is important to recognize. Surgery is uh, an option, of course, for management, but it's not the first option. We have to, first of all, understand what we are dealing with. And often what we are dealing with is um, a local mechanical problem of the spine, which can be managed non-surgically. However, occasionally, and uh, when things don't improve, it suggests an underlying problem, particularly if you are somebody who is of a certain age uh, or with previous history, and then we have to identify exactly what we are dealing with. If we use various techniques that we have in our disposal and we can identify that the reason for the back pain, for example, is some degeneration of the local 
uh, uh, joints of the spine, then it is uh, possible to deal with that by either doing injections, for example, which done in theater and try to reduce the inflammation locally, or sometimes even uh, what we call ablations, which are a more invasive procedure to actually try to stop them from hurting. Of course, if there is a lot of sciatica involved and there is evidence that we have a, a significant disc compressor uh, on the nerve itself, having make, made certain that there isn't any neurological problem or acute reason to intervene straight away. And for that, uh, I'm talking about the well-known Kodekwina syndrome, a problem that can affect patients uh, in quite acutely. It affects them with the way that they work, the legs stop working very well, they can develop problems passing water, um, complete numbness, uh, difficulties that are very highly risky, and they will need surgery straight away. That case, you definitely need to go to your local ED department or even uh, access the uh, medical uh, attention very, very quickly because they are, need surgery straight away. However, this is rare. The majority of patients will have this chronic problem that will gradually become worse and more difficult to settle down. Um, and they uh, will potentially benefit from surgery. However, what I always say to most of my patients is that acutely the pain is obviously very bad and it is better managed with non-medical, non-surgical means. 90% of patients will improve uh, within four to six weeks following the acute episode, but uh, a significant minority, up to 50% sometimes, we either have a lot of recurrences of the pain, flare-ups as we call them, or fail to improve. These are the patients that often end up to have uh, surgery, but we need to manage this acute period first before we actually decide to go on surgery. And of course, there are various rare conditions that can be identified through scans, etc., which are different, and uh, although they still cause similar, similar symptoms. Overall, surgery is not the first port of call, but it is often, often necessary. Sciatic and back pain is extremely common, uh, as um, statistics suggest that up to 80% of people at some point in their lives will experience it. And this is often to do with lifestyle. There is, of course, some genetic predisposition. Some people that have a family history of issues similar to that can develop more and more uh, problems uh, over time. So um, it is not that it's a fault of the way that we behave or or the way that we uh, the way that we function however it is clear that the lifestyle that we have all of us sitting in front of a computer for hours um, or not exercising as much gaining weight um, smoking this type of lifestyle affect the way that our bodies uh, manage and deal with the, pro with the problems that uh, we expose them to and the spine particularly, both the cervical and the lumbar, are subjected to these constant uh, insults. So we need to um, help them. We need to support them by strengthening our, our, our muscles, really. And the only way to do that is by remaining active. And that doesn't mean that you have to join a gym all the time, but uh, it is a lifelong process that we all unfortunately fail uh, to do and we have to always revisit it and try to maintain this um, uh, fitness if we can define it like that because it will protect us long term it won't cure the problems a lot of people feel that well i have a back problem i'll go to the physio and it will help it it's actually your body will do it, our bodies will do it on their own, but if we continue to support them this way by exercise, by pilates, swimming, whatever we enjoy doing, uh, this will protect us long term and avoid, uh, avoid problems. Um, also, when we have an acute episode, in, there has been um, a lot of people are afraid to move because they think that they can damage themselves. And this is proven again and again that is not a, that is not the case. What often happens is that by staying, for example, in bed for 
for days. Uh, it is actually weakens your muscles even more and creates a vicious cycle. So we all advise people to continue to move, to continue to do things as much as they can, obviously, in order to maintain as much the fitness as possible. And of course, speak to the specialists, speak to people that understand it and then get your advice.